Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Mission Impact. Uh, today we are talking about one of my favorite subjects, which is developing and maintaining profitable programs. And the operative word here is profitable, right? <laughs> because we want to make sure that the programs that we are implementing, whether it's in your nonprofit organization or your social enterprise, that they're going to have a return on investment. So we're going to get into some details today about how to um, develop profitable programs. So my name is Tracy D. Allen. I am the owner of TVA Consulting Group. I have over 20 plus years of experience in the social impact industry. I help social entrepreneurs and social enterprises to design, build, and fund their social ventures while maximizing their social impact. Okay, we have an issues here. And I <laughs> I am Daphne Pettis, nonprofit strategist and so nonprofit and social strategist at Longer Ground Strategic Solutions, helping nonprofit uh, visionaries and founders to effectively function in the role of nonprofit executive director and or leader. I'm still muted. Here I am. Look. <laughs> On top of on our top of the enterprises of like these lovely ladies, I have 20 plus years of experience working with nonprofit organizations. I help nonprofits move from startup and struggle to sustainability and success. And like Tracy, programs is my jam. Um, I, I love uh, to work with organizations, helping them to develop fundable programs. Y'all, I have I got this little thing. Be worth funding. Y'all saw that little. I, I got a T-shirt and everything. I'm, I'm gonna show y'all. But the program is where, where it's at. The pay is in the programs. And, um, you know, a lot of times we we'll start organizations and we're just doing stuff. And a program in sight, Daphne. Not a program around. We get it. Yeah, quite actually the, the pay is in the program. I said, um, the profit is in the program. <laughs> yeah. The pay, the profit, yeah. look, the yep. people, everything is in the program. Everything is in the program. The program is the place to be. And, you know, what we're doing a lot of times especially in nonprofits is we're, we're having a bunch of stuff, events, activities, um, and we're not solving any problems. You know, I like to say that programs provide a long-term solution to a problem. If what you are doing is not providing a solution to a problem, then you know that you do not have a program, right? You, 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 can't, you know this. Um, an event or activity is a short-term fix to a situation. So if you're, if you're, and I think about revivals and stuff all the time when I talk about that. I'm like, you know, church revivals. You go revival, you feel good. You're like, Lord, this is me. I'm, I'm going to be all right, right? And you get home and you're like, ain't nobody here to, 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 to help me through this. Or, you know, this is, I, I still eat all the cookies. And I'm supposed to be on a diet, even though I was motivated when I left the revival to, get, to, to change my health or whatever. But there's no next step. There's nothing to facilitate the behavior change or the situational change or whatever. So you go back to that thing and the problem is not solved, right? But if you were to take that same revival and then you, you go home and you got folk calling you and checking on you and coming by and giving you this and doing that, and eventually you'll, you'll have a change and you'll start to operate in that behavioral change that you, you went there for in the first place. That's how I, I determine the difference and I talk about the difference in programs and activities. Go ahead. Go on, Trace. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I agree when you say that um, about change being long lasting, change is truly a long lasting process. It's not supposed to be um, I'm good for two months or I'm good for um, three months. It's you're good forever. Right. Because there's systems and processes in place to help to facilitate that you stay on track. Think about a 12 step program. That's why you have a sponsor. Right someone who can come in and make sure that if you're about to fall off the wagon, they have the tools and the strategies to keep you or get you to go back on track. So that is what, what happens when you have really good programs and services in place. Think about the theory of change, right? The change theory. That's what you really need to think about when you're putting these programs and services together is how can I impact this person and people think of impact as okay you pound it it's, it's done no impact is actually the meaning of impact 
is long lasting. It happens over a long period of time because change takes time. It don't happen overnight, right? So like Ty's revival story is on point, right? I like to talk about when you go to conferences, think about you going to a conference too, and there's a good motivational speaker. And you're like, yes, I can do this. This is awesome. And then you go back to your hotel room and you're like, yeah, so about that, right? <laughs> it's kind of like the same thing. You're like, you're all hyped up because that person is speaking life into you. But there's, like she said, no next steps. So when you're thinking about creating profitable programs, the profit comes in having change that is long lasting. Whether you're going for um, sponsorship from a corporation to help to subsidize the program, or if you're a nonprofit and you're going at it from an aspect where you're looking for donors, you're looking for grants, even in a social enterprise, you can get grants and you can get contributions, not donations, right? So um, you want to be able to tell your story from a change perspective. And that is what are the outcomes of your programs? right? And a lot of times when you want that change to be long lasting, guess what? We always go back to this. I know you guys are probably tired of hearing this, but because you have to build those community partners. That is the only way to truly have a profitable program because your program can only take someone, but so far. And if you want to maintain the impact that happened in your program, you're going to have to make sure that that person has all of the other subservices that they require to maintain the outcome, the expected outcome, right? Whether you create a subservice under your, um, your organization and you still really and truly, you can't even create all of the subservices that the person is going to need. So pr partnerships, community partnerships and collaborations is where it's at. You build your program and then you look at what else can these people possibly need so that when I affect change, when my program affects some type of change, how are we going to help them to maintain this change? And you know, I like to use the GED program model, right? So you help them, you help them to study for their GED, they get their GED. Great. That's your expected outcome. They take the GED class, they go take the test and bam they got the GED because you had effective teaching processes and you helped with the remediation, whatever remediation they needed. But then after that, what happens? So now they have their GED, okay? Is that the end of it? You have to have something beyond that that you wanted them to do after getting their GED because having a GED is nothing without something else to go along with it. So if you don't have a a re-entry work program or career skills type program, then you need to partner with another organization for profit or nonprofit that provides those services. So the next thing they get their GED and now they're able to move into a better position. And then something else that may need to go along with that is childcare. Like I, I talk, if you've listened to all of my stuff before, I'm always talking about this. And I think GED, because I've worked as a GED instructor is the easiest one for me to bring it back to, because that is one of the things we always had to look at when we were putting these programs together. Okay. So we want them to get their GED. Some of them are not going to come because they don't have childcare. So we need to figure out how we're going to get them childcare services. So that is not a hindrance to them coming to the program. Right. And then a lot of them are like, well, I don't have any money to catch the bus. OK, so we need to figure out how we can get them bus passes to get there. So when you're thinking about profitable programs and if you're looking at someone to actually invest in your program, all of those things, again, theory of change, all of those aspects are things that you need to think about when you're writing the program, when you're writing about how you're going to collaborate with other community partners to make this program effective. Because if I'm giving you my money, I want to make sure that you have all bases covered and you can't tell me you're doing everything inside your own organization, whether you're a social enterprise or you're a nonprofit, you cannot do it all. Yeah. So I think one of the things that um, nonprofits and what, you know, Tracy and Ty are talking about is that, you know, noticeable change. You know, I think that um, sometimes uh, nonprofits are like, OK, well, um, yeah, we make we, we, we make a change. Right. You know, we are change agents. So, you know, how, how are you communicating that change? How is it noticeable? And I think profitable programs actually um, um, 
allow the funders and the community to see that change within those individuals that you're serving. So um, Tracy, uh, Tracy likes to talk about GED programs. I always talk about feeding programs and mentoring programs, right? And so, you know, th those those are the things that, you know, we are, um, um, that we're experienced with. So I think for me, a lot of times, what really gets me is uh, when, when we talk about feeding programs, you know, the overall goal that a lot of feeding programs have is to what, reduce, um, you know, uh, hunger and, uh, and food insecurities, right? So how do you do that? You know, a one-time feeding will not reduce those insecurities. So what else uh, uh, is your program offering outside of that one-time feeding or that once a month feeding those once a month, you know, grocery packs that uh, you have, you know, what else are, are you doing um, to help those families or those individuals, you know, uh, with those food insecurities? And I think that that those are the things that, you know, we're talking about when we're talking about those profitable programs. So what's next after you feed that person for that day or you give them groceries for that month? You families shouldn't have to go through those same things every month. So what are you putting in position for them to actually become successful and sustainable adults or families, you know, to, um, so that they don't have to continue to utilize your service? One thing, the overall goal for your program to be in your organization to, to be for that person to not need your services anymore, right? You know, so when, when you uh, think about building those profit programs, your overall goal is to uh, get that person out of your program, out of your organization, right? I want to talk, yeah. Th that's it, Daphne, right on it right there. And I, I think that that's kind of where a lot of organizations get stuck because they're, they're providing services, service after service after service, but no program, right? And what's not being understood is that a program is the umbrella for services. The program takes care of the services, right? When you're talking about serving somebody, sometimes you'll give in service and not expect anything in return because you're, you're serving. That's what service is about. So if I want to pay your utility bill or if I want to give you a Thanksgiving turkey as a service to you, you may not come back to my program to do anything else or you may I may not get anything for you from from your participation because I am serving you but when I'm trying to create a profitable program I'm going to have to put you and have you invest some time into the work that I'm doing so that we can benefit as an organization from the service that we are providing to you and I think about you know the Thanksgiving turkey giveaway you know um one of my team members said, why are they giving frozen turkeys to homeless people? They ain't got no kitchens. They ain't got no stove. How are they going to cook the turkey? I'm like, girl, you you on it, right? But you think about, you know, giving away turkeys at Thanksgiving, that's that's a service that you're providing. We're giving away this turkey. But what happens after that? They can't even eat the turkey, right? We can't even teach them how to cook. We can't even help them buy a home. What happens next? What does this service lead us to do that's going to create a long-term, sustainable change not just for them but for our organization because we're looking for a return on our investment as well if i'm investing all these turkeys my organization needs a return that return is going to be the service numbers that's going to be your participation that's going to be your change in behavior that i'm going to be able to take to the next funder to get some more money we're not just doing this to be doing it we don't just do it around here we ain't nike y'all go ahead <laughs> I agree, right? Um, I don't expect to give you, let's say, backpacks. That's another thing that people love to do as an activity, right? And I'm okay with it if it's done correctly. I know we like, it always seems like we're putting it down, but we're not. It just needs to be done properly. But if I give you a backpack this year, I don't expect to see you coming back every single year. If you're not just doing it as an individual who has some extra money and wants to give, away, give it away. But if you're a true social enterprise or nonprofit organization. Um, okay, I saw you this year. Maybe I see you again next year. But if I see you again next year, then I know, hey, there's a deeper issue here and I need to um, make a note on the card, the intake card, to reach out to that person to figure out how can we help you so you're not a repeat person here every single year. So those are just some of the things. And we could talk 
forever about this topic, but we're not um, because we'll always have to come back and, you know, we'll always be talking about this topic anyway. So um, thank you for joining us for another episode of Mission Impact. And remember to like, share, subscribe, and comment down below if you have a comment. And we'll see you in the next episode. Bye, everyone.